I'm Harrison Edwards, I'm 17 and I go to the Manirua High School. I'm interested in food tech and so today I'll be looking at a job as a brewery worker. And introducing Harrison to the brewing aspect of the job will be Natasha O'Brien, DB's senior project brewer. The history of DB Breweries is that we've been brewing on the site since 1929. The operation has since expanded out into four breweries that operate around the country. Um, we've got two modes of uh, fermentation here. We have continuous fermentation, which was pioneered by a, a great man called Morton Coots. Um, it's extremely rare worldwide. Um, and we also use traditional batch methods of fermentation, um, which is what I'm going to take Harrison through today. OK, Harrison, uh, let's investigate the malt. OK, so all malts not created equal, so you get different types of malts and you get a whole multitude of flavours uh, coming out of the malt. So have a taste. It really tastes like malt biscuit. <laughs> yeah, malt biscuit, yeah. So these quite often are used for your lighter um, lager type beers. And then if you try this one on the other hand, it's like burnt coffee, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so different, isn't it? Oh, that is actually really dry. <laughs> <laughs> This type of malt's used for your darker beers and stouts. Natasha now takes Harrison off to the brew house to see the next and essential stage in the brewing process. This part of the process is just purely concerned with making a sugary liquid for the yeast to feed on, and that's all the brew house does. The liquid is created when the malt or malted barley is mixed with heated water in the mash tank, converting the starch into sugar. So we're just going to do a simple conversion test. So this is what brewers do the world over to make sure that we've got um, all our starch converted into our sugar. So we've got our mash sample here that we've put into the dish. And what we're going to use is iodine. So if it's unconverted and we drip it in there, you'll see it go black. If people are interested in um, scientific um, processes, then, then brewing's very, it's got it all really. It's what I love about it. It's not only an occupation to be a brewer, it is also a craft. OK, so you can see straight away it's turned black, there's still starch there. Um, it's unconverted, so we've got to need to leave it in the mash tun a little bit longer. Once the starch is converted, the water's filtered, then boiled to sterilise it and drive off any unwanted flavours before the hops are added. The hops are really essential to the brewing process. The aroma hops that we're going to put in now give it the aroma in the beer. So just have a smell. It smells a bit like something you'd cook with. Yeah, it adds the spice to the beer. So the malt's the body and the soul, the hops are the spice. So they give those nice, zesty um, aromas. So if you want to weigh out 2.7 2 kilos. There's a variety of parts into the, the brewing process. Um, you could do what I've done, in which you study in a science or an engineering capacity. At an entry level, employees can be introduced to the basic skills and knowledge behind the brewing process through on-the-job training from people like Natasha. The water's cooled, yeast added, and the fermentation process begins. OK, so it's a month later. We've finished our fermentation. Um, it's now starting to look a bit more like beer. Next step, filtration. OK, so we're all suited and booted. Let's go make up the DE ready for filtration. DE is diatomaceous earth, which helps draw off the yeast. And we'll make up the uh, body. Paper. Okay, so the skills you need for brewing are strong drive for quality. You know, we're wanting to make a quality pro uh, product. So, um, you also want to um, be a, a fast, effective decision maker because it's a fast paced environment out there. And you also need to be quite flexible and, and move, move with the process. Okay, we've finished filtration, um, we've taken the yeast out. Let's have a look at our finished product. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? So we've got nice brown, bright beer, uh, good head retention, good clarity, um, filtration's been good. Now let's just check the CO2 content to make sure it's good for packaging. OK, 2.83, that's good. It's great for packaging. Let's go. Chris Hekatoa, DB Staff Development Coordinator, will be showing Harrison the packaging lines. Here at DB Water Matter, we have four lines, two glass lines, one keg line and one canning line. The empty bottles are uncrated and fed onto the conveyor. We're now at the uh, machine that's called the rinser. And the purpose of this machine is to actually rinse every single bottle that comes through this carousel. So how many bottles come through here every hour? Approximately 23,000 bottles per hour, or roughly 380 bottles per minute all of which are filled with beer and capped. 
This is my home ground here in packaging. Uh, I started as an operator, packaging technician, back in 97. I then went on to um, be the supervisor of the glass lines and the can lines and spent about three to four years doing those jobs and more recently moved into the training coordinator role and now I look after training for the whole of supply chain, DB. This machine automatically lines up the filled bottles for labelling and Harrison's next task is to change over the neck labels by hand. And then he checks the results to make sure he got the labels lined up correctly. We're going to look for front, neck label, back label, and that's the date code. So just make sure that you've got, got a print on there with the date code on all, all of these bottles here, you can just put them back onto the line. All these, yep. After the bottles are put into packs, they head off to be stacked and wrapped. Okay, Harrison, we're at the uh, final end of the production line. This is what we call the robot or palletizing area. What happens here is all the finished boxes get stacked on pallets, layer upon layer, which sends us to this area. We put a drop sheet on top to protect the pallets from dust, and we wrap up the pallets to also give it that stability and protect it from the elements of the air. So, how did Harrison go over the past couple of days? Personally, I've, I've loved showing Harrison the brewing process. He's been really keen, he's been really interested, and he's asked some really intelligent questions. I thought he handled uh, the jobs and the activities that we gave him. I thought he handled them really well. Uh, the parts of the job that I really enjoyed were the environment, Everyone was really friendly and keen to help me out with stuff that I never knew. And all the robots, they're pretty cool. To become a brewery worker, an interest in beer and technology is a great start. Useful subjects include maths, English, computer studies and sciences, especially biology and chemistry. Employees will learn the fundamental skills and knowledge on the job and from there can progress to higher roles with the National Certificate in Food and Related Products Processing as the training pathway. Unit standards specific to brewing and packaging processes can be selected. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.